consume and share news today. It is largely rooted in social media outlets, a reason why it's crucial to look at what's being discussed online. For our daily social media minute, we're joined by Key Kim. Good morning, Key. Good morning. Waking up seven in the morning for three straight days is hard for an old man. It's hard for any of us, and I, I feel like the age card you can't use on us because, well, our producer. <laughs> well, she's young. She looks young, right? It's very deceiving, and sometimes I forget, and I treat her like a good friend, and I realize, ooh. Exactly. Ooh, yeah. You are young, yeah. too. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's always relative. I'm really not that young anymore. But let's get started, Ki. Uh, today sure. marks a holiday. In fact, double the holiday. Uh, mm -hmm. Buddha's birthday and the 16th anniversary of Teacher's Day landed on the same day this year. Uh, thanks for joining us on the holiday, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, apparently, I'm a teacher, too. So. You are, right? Yeah. And so yeah. do you get some love and attention on this day from your students? Not really. I don't think <laughs> so. Too not yet. Well, not yet. Exactly. It's, uh, the we'll see. All right. So we should dwell on that. But I guess the first topic at hand has nothing to do with that. In fact, it's quite unpleasant. Uh, it has kind of an adorable, approachable name, but don't be uh, deceived. There's nothing friendly about mm -hmm. it. Tinkerbell, fairy dust, supposed to make people happy, but that's not the case. The nickname for these bugs. Well, right. An unfriendly guest. Um, it's it's uh, act, it's a uh, real name is Ephemera orientalis, I think I pronounced it right. It's Tongyang Harusari, or as you mentioned, it's also known as a Tinkerbell. It's basically a mayfly, and uh, it has recently appeared in the city center due to the hotter weather than usual, mm -hmm. causing inconvenience to a lot of citizens. Uh, its body size is about uh, 18 to 22 millimeters, but the wings are about 50 millimeters. It's much larger than the body, and that's why it's called um, Tinkerbell, because it looks like a Tinkerbell. Um, but uh, it normally appears around this time of the year, the late spring or early summer. <clears throat> um, they fly in groups every night for breeding, and uh, strong lightning in the city center, of course, lure them. Um, I had the uh, show that I had host about uh, a couple of weeks back, mm -hmm. and I was in the Hangang River, uh, Chamshi Hangang, the river park, and I think I ate five of them. <laughs> uh, it, it, I, was, I was outside, and then it, was, it was just flying around. It just came into my mouth. Um, Bugs, apparently, uh, apparently to, they're going to be yes. an alleviation to the ongoing food crisis. Most of them I are very protein heavy. Were you lots full? of proteins. <laughs> and uh, apparently, according to the National Weather Service, uh, it's the uh, hottest April mm -hmm. ever since 1973. Okay. Uh, like you said, uh, it appears a lot in Hangang River. And because Hangang River is protected for a drinking water purpose, they cannot use any bug repellent, which is uh, no chemicals allowed there. Ah. But it causes more problems around there. Okay, so what they say about Hangang River being actually really clean, it's true. We can't mm -hmm. use chemical or pesticides to kill off these bugs. Uh, we have to just no. let nature take its course. Uh, that must have been fun, hosting a show while bugs fly into your mouth. Well, it was a it was a drone show, so a lot of drones Ooh. fly to. Uh, it was it was a very extravagant. It was amazing show. Uh, just besides that, for the fact that I had to eat uh, Tinkerbells. A lot of <laughs> Tinkerbells. <laughs> All right. So, do they cause any harm to the human body? I feel like that would be an entirely different conversation. Mm, not really, because uh, the viruses, bacteria are not transmitted by these bugs because okay. their mouth degenerate when they become adults so basically their mouth is just closed when they are how do they survive you know, adult yeah i guess that's why they live only one only a day uh they cannot eat they cannot they cannot bite people um but just because they're stinking through the buildings and under the white lights uh many people are not happy with the scenery that they create 
Okay, so they don't cause any harm directly to humans. It's just, I mean, in droves, it does look a little bit more frightening than it is. It's, it's kind of this like lime green shade like Tinkerbell sure. and they just attach themselves to these doors, walls, what have you. All right, so what are authorities doing? I mean, if they can't throw out pesticides, what can they do? So they are using this uh, repellent machine. It's an eco-friendly machine, so um, it lures the mayfly with the lights and then they just trap them inside. So uh, not necessarily we're using a chemicals or anything. And they also have a special quarantine team to mm -hmm. respond it right away. Mm -hmm. um, and the government office is also providing a lot of guidance on how to cope with them. Uh, so a lot of uh, them are replacing the white light with a yellow light. Mm -hmm. So um, it lures less of the mayflies. Ah. Uh, and then you can drop them, you, you can use um, the dusters or the water sprayers to just get rid of them. I don't and know, the images that you and our producer sent to us, it, it looks mm -hmm. it looks like, you know, there's a lot of them. Usually they congregate towards that light, right. as you mentioned. And I just imagine myself trying to dust it off and it just flying towards me. That's like my worst nightmare. Mm -hmm. I, I would rather just... I mean, uh, if you recall, I think uh, back in those days, we did have a uh, outside studio. Like it was, sometimes we had a live outside and near the Han River. Um, and when How that old are happened... You? <laughs> Uh, well, our probably producer remembers. <laughs> oh, she does remember. Ten, 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 really? Ten years ago? Okay. So what about it? Yeah, we, we did have an outside studio. And then what happens is uh, normally, you know, because we had a white lights, a lot of bugs are uh, drawn to the studio. Then when we look, we're in the studio and then we're surrounded by all these bugs. So it was a very happy moment. <laughs> It, it sounds like your job was made even more difficult, but how, how far you have come since then? Drone shows still with a little bit of bugs. <laughs> yes. And then I was just telling you this, that that's a part of uh, um, this whole fiesta that's going on nowadays. And the drone show is taking place again this Saturday. And uh, if you're willing to just come out and see the nice drone show and myself, then just come on out. And know that these bugs are harmless to the human body. And go see exactly. Yi by Hangang River. It should be a nice day. All right. What a, what a seamless plug-in. Nicely done. All right. Let's move on to our second uh, buzzword. Uh, it seems that age is really nothing but a number. I mean, we say this so candidly all the time. But mm -hmm. you look at what people who are much older than us to do something incredible. And you think maybe it is just a number. Well, not much older. Right. Um, so this lady is uh, 83, but uh, she became the oldest doctoral graduate from this university, the Howard University, Mary Fowler. Um, and then she got this uh, doctoral degree at the age of 83. And then she previously earned a bachelor's degree and two master's degree from the Maple Springs Baptist Bible College and seminary. So she's she's very scholarly. I, I was going to say, she's just collecting degrees now. She didn't stop at a bachelor. She went on to get two masters. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, it's remarkable. But if you, right. But if you listen to her story, it's even more remarkable because she said uh, she has to talk with God before making the choice to go back to school to get a doctoral degree and a bachelor's degree. But then she said, it was never my thought that I would go beyond maybe one semester because after all, I've been cut out of school since 1959. <laughs> so that was a long time ago. Yeah. And uh, he said, she, uh, she said, I didn't even know she could uh, retain information. And she said, uh, my mom and dad were born in an era when it was illegal for them to learn to read and write. So, you know, probably she was hungry to learn more okay and get this degree mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and as she said i want everyone to realize that i am 83 which means if i can do it why not you it's why great it's absolutely humbling, isn't it? Because I, I joke about right. my my memory just being not the same, um, not being able to retain new information better as I did in my 20s or my teens. But hey, sure. I, and maybe they're just stupid excuses after all. We can't complain. Nope. At all. Nope. Mm -hmm. Bugs or not. <laughs> nope. <laughs> On to our last buzzword this morning. Uh, Turkey, uh, the beautiful country. Uh, it gets a lot of tourists for a number of different reasons. Uh, you've also mm -hmm. been on a business trip there. Uh, what was your experience like? 
Well, um, I'll, it takes about 10 hours to get there, 10, and it takes about 10 hours flying back. Mm. And I was there for eight hours uh, because it was for the <laughs> Idols um, showcase or something. Eight long hours. <laughs> yeah, eight long hours. Uh, but it was beautiful country. The, um, I mean, the scenery, everything, the culture there was amazing. The food was there, amazing. Mm. But uh, it has become a holy place for a lot of hair loss people like someone uh, like me uh, with a million foreigners visiting the hair transparent hair, hair transplants operation in 2022 alone um, relatively it offers a lower price for the procedure and uh, mm-hmm. there's an active government support combined mm-hmm. so many quote unquote hair loss people who mm-hmm. do need to get something done are crawling into Turkey. I remember even a few years back, in hushed reverent tones, we talked about Mm -hmm. certain celebrities seemingly having a head full of hair out of nowhere. And rumors said that they traveled to Turkey because, like you said, it was more cost effective. And back then, their technology was arguably at one point maybe even better than ours. So maybe we need to make those comparisons. Is it really that much cheaper? I mean, plane tickets are really expensive these days. I mean, to be honest with you, nowadays a lot of uh, Korean um, uh, hair, so transplant speak, hospitals? hair transplant center or hospitals, they're getting cheaper than how it used to be. Um, but the Business Insider, the American outlet, has released a story of this man named Spencer McNaughton, a journalist uh, who recently received a hair transplant. He had his friend named Bennett, and all of a sudden he appeared. Uh, with lots of hair, looking much younger. So he flew 10 hours to Istanbul and he went to see his friend's hair loss doctor and he transplanted about 4,000 hairs, 3,400 of them from the back of his head and 600 of uh, 600 of them from his beard. Uh, so when you transplant a single hair, then it uh, it grows into two or three strands. So uh, for th- with 4,000 hair transplant, it's going to become 8,300 or something uh, hair growing on your, you know, in your head between six months to a year. Mm. And hair transplant costs about 3,500 US dollars, including the consultation, surgery, follow-up care, and three nights at a four-star hotel. And uh, flights from New York to Turkey cost about $2,000. So all total, it's roughly five to $6,000, which is really, really cheaper than um, what will you be getting from the states? Because states, you'll be paying at least double of that. Yeah, American clinics are notoriously expensive. So for them, it makes mm-hmm. sense. For maybe South Korean uh, patients with hair, receding hairlines, they might have more options now that are text better and right. more affordable. There, there are actually two ways to do it. Uh, one, without cutting your um, actual flesh, because in the back of the head, yeah. uh, you might have to cut flesh, or uh, you can just um, take, you know, each hair out to transplant. So, like from the roots, right? Bit more expensive, yeah, yeah. Which is a bit more expensive, and it takes longer. And it's a much more intricate process. It's, uh, mm-hmm. but I'm just, I'm just surprised to know that you know so much. <laughs> yeah, because I am very um, interested. In- Yes. <laughs> I know a few friends who already got hair transplants and they're like late 20s. I can hook it up. Yes. Well, thank you. <laughs> no, I'll look into it. All right. Uh, you mentioned something about the Turkey government being involved with the business. How so? Yeah, because they even call it instead of Istanbul, they say hair Istanbul. Um, according to Turkey Health and Tourism Association, about a million people visited Turkey for hair transplant in 2022, and they spent about $2 billion. So um, the experts predict that Turkey's hair transplant business will expand to $11 billion by the end of 2024. So it's a national business. All right, Key, thank you so much for today's coverage. Uh, I guess that's our last edition with you this week, right? Yes. Are, are, are you, yes. you seem happy. <laughs> this is not last edition because you always call me. So yeah. I will always call you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Key. We appreciate it. Have a great rest of the holiday and we'll speak to you soon. Thank you. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. 
See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.